Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Blue Note here in New York City. When you think of Roy Haynes, you think of probably one of the most important, if not iconic figures in jazz music. And this man has played with some of the most important music figures, ranging from Louis Armstrong to Sarah Vaughan, Thelonious Monk, Stan Getz, John Coltrane, the list goes on and on. Tonight he's playing with this Fountain of Youth band featuring NEA jazz master and bassist Ron Carter. And these two have played together well over 45 years ago. And tonight this is the first time they're going to be able to stand on the band stage and play together. We sat down earlier with Roy and we talked about his career. We talked about why he continues to play at 89 years young, as well as reflect on some of the highs and lows of his career. And I also sat down with Mr. Carter and we talked about the first time that he met and played with the legendary Roy Haynes. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Roy Haynes and the Founder Youth Band featuring NEA Jazz Master and Bassist Ron Carter, live here at the Blue Note, here on the Pace Report. lunch today and I just look at you and you really are an encouragement for a lot of people who are into music but also just what you do at your age. <laughs> what do you want me to say about that? I've, sometimes I forget how old I am, you know, but hearing that I'm this age from you, it's very inspiring to hear, you know, that you're looking at me, you know, special because I'm this age. 
You know, Roy, you have brought a very, very unique voice to this music. And I want to ask you a couple of questions about one of your heroes, which was Joe Jones. Joe Jones is one of the people that really influenced you to play the drums. What was it that he brought to the spirit of the music that encouraged you? Well, first of all, he was with the Basie Band. That was a, a, a swing band. They say Benny Goodman was the king of swing, but I don't know about that. When you mention people like Count Basie, man, and to me, Count Basie was the king of swing. You know, now what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about swing, we're talking about jazz, we're talking about Count Basie. And uh, talking about myself. Yeah, so uh, go ahead. Joe Jones was that dude that really kind of put that fire in you. Uh, yes, he was one of them. He was one of the main ones. Cozy Cole was great. And then there was Chick Webb, who I didn't see in person. I was very young when Chick passed away when I was still very young. You know. Tell me about how you developed the love for this the instrument because you're self-taught and a lot of people think that you went through years of training but the band stage has been basically your teacher the bandstand has been my teacher well that's where i've been taught on the bandstand the bandstand was not particularly my teacher i had a lot of teachers anyhow i'm still learning I, there's still teachers out here for me and others and every moment like i say is to be cherished and enjoy and continue on what was the first exposure to the music? I understand that your brother, your older brother, was a person who was very inf influential. In fact, he played a lot of jazz records. But what was the first actual jazz show that you saw as a kid? Uh, the first jazz show, I don't remember. TV wasn't popular then. In fact, when I was very young, we didn't even have a TV, you know, when they first come out. We got them later. <laughs> but... Uh, Listening to uh, records that I would hear on the radio and that my uh, older brother would buy, or, uh, you know, things like the Basie Band, you know, Duke's Band. My brother loved Duke Ellington. I love Duke, too, but uh, I was more into the Basie straight-ahead swing thing, even though uh, Sonny Gray, who ended up being a friend of mine, was a drummer with Duke Ellington's band, but Papa Joe was my main influence. Uh, next. <laughs> <laughs>
Ramon, when was the very first time you met Roy Haynes? Uh, in the early 60s, when Tony Williams joined the band, the story was out that he was a student of Roy Haynes and of the late great drummer Alan Dawson. And uh, I knew uh, Alan, and I had heard Roy on records, and I, I knew he played with Sarah Vaughan, and I figured, wow, he played with Sarah Vaughan, and he's influenced Tony Williams. I've got to see this guy. What is he doing that makes Tony Abbott able to have that kind of concept and play with that kind of grace. You know? So uh, I went to see him and, and uh, I didn't introduce myself because I was kind of in the background and I was comfortable not to be part of the scene. You know, it was Roy's show and boy, it was just, just phenomenal. And, and uh, it took a while for us to get together. We made a couple of records with Tommy Flanagan. And, and uh, boy, what a great time that was. Uh, and I'm looking forward to this next engagement in February to see if I've gotten better since, since I've last heard him so I can help the music do something else. What is it about his drumming? What did he bring to the game of jazz music that so different than his other contemporaries who are no longer here now? Yeah. Well, for me, one of the important things is how he tunes the drums. I mean, they're just, it's just bright enough to not get in the way of the bass range. You know, when, when drummers tune their drums a certain way, it affects certain ranges of the bass. And Roy has been able to understand that process. He's been able to tune his drums so all our notes are available to, to be heard. And, and you can't imagine what a relief that is to, to not to know that, to know I'm going to work with this person. He's so conscious of the bass notes that he tunes his drums to allow every note to be heard. That's fabulous. I'm looking forward to it. February 25 and 26. Last question. I'm so out of your hair, Mr. Carter. Okay, well, not, not much, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Roy Haynes, the founder of youth, and this man is in his 90s, and he's bringing a whole nother life to the music. And what is it that you most, most love about playing with him? Um, I think the fact that every night is better than the last night. Yeah, every night that he plays is better than the last night he played. I look forward to being part of that process. You have been part of, really, the evolution of this music, as we said earlier. But New York really was, in the mid-1940s, it changed again and went from big band to bebop. How did you segue from your musical styles to the different type of jazz or the new style of jazz? Well, I don't think I really segued or I had to segue. I just continued on, added part of this new style onto what I was trying to do. You know, I was a teenager when I first started playing professionally. And so uh, I was part of uh, the new generation, so to speak, you know, new guys coming up. We had great drummers, like I mentioned, uh, Papa Joe Jones, and then J.C. Hurd was a great drummer. He was a little younger than uh, Papa Joe. we become very fr uh, friendly also, and Art Blakey was a very good friend of mine from uh, oh, man, the early days of my uh, beginning with this music, and and the beat goes on, like uh, we say. <laughs> and the beat goes on because another one of your contemporaries, who was about two years older you, was Max Roach, and Max kind of helped you out as far as developing your style, too. He did some things to the music and also to jazz that was a little different in a kind of straight-ahead kind of format. Well, uh, you can go ahead on. I'm learning, listening <laughs> about <laughs> what I've learned and what I heard from Max and some of the other great drummers like Art Blakey, and uh, there were many others also.
as the master teacher, what is it about this generation that you want the younger musicians to understand as far as the rudiments of playing the drums and also just knowing the music? Well, that word rudiment, uh, oh, that's a funny word. Anyhow, uh, how many is that? Three syllables? Da, da, da. One, two, three. Yeah, rudiment. Oh, man, rudiment. I never did. Wow, that word doesn't go with Haynes. I was never what they would call a, a rudimental drummer. I guess I had my own way of performing a rudiment. You know, in other words, I probably would make up my rudiments because I never was, I couldn't play that way, you know, the way they had rudiments written for drummers. And uh, I had to go on and ad lib and do it the way I thought it should sound like or what I would be comfortable hearing or doing. And I continued on trying to play like that. And I'm sure that has helped me be a very original drummer to this so-called jazz. You know, everyone knows about your time with, with Sarah Vaughn. You played with her for... Everybody, does, everybody probably doesn't know. A lot of the young people <laughs> that's probably never even uh, heard or uh, familiar with Sarah Vaughn. <laughs> Tell me about the first time that she, she, she saw you and the first time she asked you to join her band. Um, and you're taking me back to the early 50s to see if I can remember. I think I joined her in uh, 1953, if I remember exactly. And I was with her for... Uh, maybe about five years. And uh, I stayed with her because she was a genius, for one thing. And I loved uh, working steady, playing the drums, making money. So those two reasons, being with a great genius and making steady money, was, and that was very good for me, for my head and for my future. What was it like playing with Thelonious Monk? Well, The Only Smunk was uh, not only just uh, a great pianist, great performer, great band leader. He was a great individual and he was very original. And to play with people like Monk, which he was a very different type of a person, to try to describe him is not the easiest for me, at least at the moment. <laughs> but he was a great genius and somebody to play with. We never discussed what we were going to do much. We did not rehearse a lot. We may have rehearsed, you know, a couple of times, but not much. In fact, with uh, Charlie Parker, Monk, um, we didn't rehearse a lot anyhow. With great people like Sarah Vaughan, we rehearsed if we were going to do something special, maybe for TV or something like that. But, uh, you know, playing this music for the length of time that I have been, it's been great, and every moment now even feels like uh, something new is happening, you know, with my group or whoever I'm performing with. And I cherish every moment of it all. One of my personal favorites of your collaboration with Oliver Nelson, Blues and Abs Abstract, Abstract Truth. Truth. I mean, he was really, I think, one of the most criminally underrated arrangers, but also a band leader also. What was it like collaborating with Oliver Nelson? It was really great collaborating with Oliver. He was a great artist, and uh, it was just a great experience, you know, to find an artist like this who was a great writer and a you know, great performer as well. You know, it was something very special, I guess, when you uh, listen to the records, at least when I listen to them over or hear them on the radio or something, it brings back great memories of great moments. What well, is it about his orchestrations and his arrangements that... Well, I think the, his orchestrations spoke for themselves. I mean, like, uh, oh, man, his tunes were great, you know. Uh, I can't think of one title immediately that I like more than the next, but all of his writing was great. And to perform with a great artist like this it was quite a great experience. Thank you. 
days, what does jazz music mean to you? What does jazz music mean to me? What does music mean to me? Not only jazz, I love music. <laughs> but I happen to be a, a, a so-called jazz drummer. So it's cool. I love it. <laughs> cool in the gang. Cool without the gang. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Blue Note. I'd like to personally thank NEA Jazz Master Ron Carter, as well as the legendary Roy Haynes for their time and their warm hospitality. Also, the staff and management here at the Blue Note. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace.